Hey everybody, I am doing a really big water change on my native tank here. This is the first water change I've done since I've set it up. I checked the nitrate and it's not too bad. It's orange, but it's getting up towards the reddish area. I've got a lot of plant material and wood and stuff in there breaking down as well as all the fish and crayfish and whatnot. So we're going to do a big fat water change and while we're doing the big fat water change we are going to try to get the last little bit of silicone off of the edge of the glass from when I removed the rim. So I apologize for all that white glare in the background but I got to keep the water from splashing. I guess I could have just unplug the pump and shut it off but this allows the water to keep flowing but it's not splashing. So what we're going to start with is a little bit of pure gum spirits turpentine and if you've seen any of my videos about how I made my waterfall tank you'll know that I use this to sort of liquefy the silicone caulk and make it into more of a almost like a paint kind of consistency and so what I'm going to do today I guess I should have dried this off first let's wipe all that water off and then we're going to take the turpentine I'm just going to stay right on the edge up here well away from the water and we're going to get it nice and coated give it a few moments to let that turpentine sort of work its way into the silicone and even though this is already cured silicone this would actually eventually just sort of wipe off with the paper towel that I'm using. In fact, I might simply do that and see if we can't wipe it off completely. This down here is where it's the thickest. You can see it's already starting to come off in clumps, but that's on the inside of the tank, so I don't really want any of that turpentine covered stuff to get in the tank too much. I would be really, really, really surprised if trace amounts of turpentine actually had any kind of negative impact on the tank, but better safe than sorry. So now we're just going to take a regular old straight edged razor blade, and that should have softened it up enough. That it just peels off in one big long string of silicone. I think the inside is pretty much clean. Now I am going to go get a clean paper towel and we will be able to wipe the rest of that off. So give me a moment, I'll be right back. I don't know if you can see them or not, but there's a crayfish down there. It keeps grabbing at the fish as they swim by. All right, we're gonna start with just a dry piece of paper towel. There's still a little tiny bit of silicone on there. I don't know if that's on the inside or the outside though. So that should have wiped away most of it. A little bit of good old-fashioned Windex. Go 
are actually scratches in the glass. I don't know if they're showing up, but they look like hairs and stuff that are stuck on the glass, but they're not. All right, I'm going to go reverse the flow of the water. I'm going to get one more paper towel that's wet with water, and we'll clean that Windex off of there, and that should be the end of it. Alright, let's give that a few minutes to let the tank fill up and then we'll do one sort of final wrap up and have a look at what that actually looks like with nice clear water and I'll show you what the nitrate levels look like before we did the water change and after and of course we'll get a look at it without that big piece of white cloth hanging there so sit tight and we'll see you in a minute. Alright, we are all done. I've let the tank settle down a little bit. And now we are actually going to feed the tank. I never did that earlier. It is getting kind of late, but the crayfish are nocturnal. They'll be able to find the algae wafers I put in there uh, overnight. And, of course, the uh, gambusia in there, those mosquito fish, they'll gobble the flake food up very quickly. So we'll have a look at that. But first, don't know how well this is going to come out on camera, especially being backlit the way it is. But this is the before. It's... Pretty orange, but not red yet. Again, I know this is a terrible way of looking at this, but you can clearly see the difference in darkness at least. And then this is now pale orange, probably down around 10 parts per million or something, somewhere in there. So that's just a look at that. Now we will start by throwing some algae wafers in. Let's see if that crayfish right up front can grab one of these if it sinks fast enough for them. Tried to get those fish, I think. Remember, crayfish are opportunistic hunters. They're not particularly good, but they're patient. And again, they're opportunistic. Uh, sooner or later, a little minnow or a, you know one of those gambusi or something is going to swim in front of a crayfish, and they reach out and grab it. And if they can get a hold of it, they get themselves a little fish dinner. So. In addition to not really being able to keep plants in a tank with crayfish, it's not really recommended, at least this type of crayfish. Oh, uh, we got one crawling up the leaf in the back of the tank. I don't know how well that's coming out. But there is a crayfish crawling on that big leaf in the back. Uh, but I wouldn't recommend keeping this species of crayfish with any kind of fish you really don't want to see, you know, injured or killed. And that includes, you know, the variety of uh, native type crayfish you'd find. The only ones that are really safe to put in an aquarium with other fish are those little dwarf Mexican jobs. You can get them in orange or red and they're really cool. I've actually had them before. Um, unfortunately I had them in a tank with my tenopoma and my tenopoma grew pretty quickly and they became snacks for him pretty quickly and so I never came across those shrimp for a reasonable price again. I mean, uh, those crayfish for a reasonable price again, and so I've never gotten them. But I really did like those little dwarf Mexican orange crayfish, and again, they're safe to keep with fish. These crayfish are not. So, that's about it. The bulk of that video was supposed to be about getting that rim clean, and you can actually see how clean it is. Let's have one close-up look at it. So it's kind of hard to tell it's there, and that's the point. It's supposed to just sort of not interfere with your vision. You're just supposed to be looking in the water and looking at the tank. I put my GoPro in here the other night, and I let it record for, well, till the battery died. It's probably about an hour and 40 minutes, maybe an hour and 45 minutes. And out of all of that, I got about 25 seconds of one crayfish crawling across the back of the camera, you know, back of the tank at the far end of where the camera could, you know, even pick it up. So that was my whole video after all that. All 
awesome little creatures. All right, everybody, there you go. I'm going to say thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget this one is my native tank, of course. And I will see you real soon in the next one.